I'm Hans Hansen. I'm here today to answer one question. I'm going to address a side issue related to that one question, and then I'm going to ask you a question as well. The question that I'll answer today is straightforward. Has Texas ever executed an innocent person? This is an important and long-standing question. The Supreme Court has taken up this question on several occasions, but they have never come up with a definitive conclusion. There is some agreement on the Supreme Court that the execution of an innocent would amount to an event that the Constitution cannot tolerate. It's important to note here that I am not advocating for or against the death penalty. My role here is as a scholar. Colleagues and I simply looked at the empirical data available and answered this question. We used Texas's own data from their court rulings and the Court of Criminal Appeals. The data we used involves people who were sentenced to death and later discovered to be innocent. Using the number of people who were sentenced to death and discovered to be innocent, we were able to accurately calculate the chance that someone was sentenced to death in Texas, not discovered innocent, but rather executed. In making this calculation, I assure you we were extremely conservative. It was important to us for several reasons, but we wanted to underestimate the probability that Texas had executed an innocent. We are the first people to make this calculation. It was not hard. It is simple math, but paradoxical as you will see. Let's start with some of the ways people could end up on death row accidentally. The first is wrongful conviction. These people are not innocent. Uh, for example, perhaps during their trial, evidence was put on trial that was not secured with the search warrant, so the evidence is thrown out and also their conviction. They're usually awarded a retrial, and very often they are tried again and convicted again. The next level of uh, people who are on death row by mistake is exoneration, people who get an exoneration. There are fewer of these. These people have been relieved of any blame from the crime that sent them to death row. Most people, most all people, count exonerated as innocent. We do not. We had an even higher standard of innocence, a more stringent criteria called actually innocent. There are fewer of those. The Supreme Court recently started to use the term actually innocent to somehow distinguish people who had been exonerated in a legal manner to incorporate the idea of factual innocence. So they used the term actually innocent. These people are really, really innocent, if, if that's a term. And, and we could look at that number to calculate the probability that some, the, the chances that you are innocent and you're on death row. Let's look at some of the numbers. Texas has sent 1,071 people to death row. All this data, I should say, is since reinstatement of the death penalty in Texas in 1976. So this is all since 1976. We have sent 1,071 people to death row. We have had 486 executions. 486 people have been put to death. There are 298 currently on death row. So there's a, a gap there. There are people that actually have the status no longer on death row. But they are not, they have not been executed, but they are no longer on death row. Now there are, there are many ways to leave death row without being executed. It's not rare that people die of natural causes while awaiting their execution. It happens. There are also suicides 
before the state gets a chance to execute them uh, uh, and consider it. There are also court rulings. For example, fairly recently, the Supreme Court determined it was unconstitutional to execute minors. At the time of that court ruling, Texas had 30 people on death row who were minors at the time of their crime. So those 30 people had their sentences commuted to life without parole or life, and they had the status of no longer on death row. Let's take a closer look at the number, the people who are no longer on death row, who were there by mistake. Wrongfully convicted, there have been 34 people who wound up on death row who were wrongfully convicted. That doesn't mean they're innocent. Of those 34, 12 have been exonerated. And of those 12 exonerated, 10 have been actually innocent. Now, one way to be deemed actually innocent, for example, is by, to meet this higher standard of innocence, is by DNA exoneration. You might have heard the term, he was completely exonerated by DNA evidence. But DNA exoneration is not the only way to be deemed actually innocent. Anthony Graves served almost 20 years on death row in Texas, in Texas for a crime he did not commit. DNA had nothing to do with his conviction or nothing to do with his being free. He was awarded a new trial. A special prosecutor for the state was appointed to retry Anthony Graves. And the special prosecutor found perjury in the first trial and extreme misconduct by the first prosecutor. The special prosecutor announced they could find absolutely no connection between Anthony Graves and the crime that sent him to death row. No connection whatsoever. He was totally innocent. It was the prosecutor the state prosecutor who was shouting his innocence from the rooftops. This certainly meets the criteria of being actually innocent on death row. It does happen. Let's look at how often. Here are the chances of being actually innocent and being on death row. We know that there's been 10 cases of actual innocence on death row. Out of the 1,071 people that we have sent to death row, that gives us the probability of being sent to death row, even though you are innocent, or being on death row and being innocent, of 10 out of 1,071, which gives us a probability of 0.009337. That's a very low number. If you were to go by media, media reports, you might think that being innocent and being on death row is a fairly common occurrence. It just isn't. When I ask my students, how many people do you think are innocent on death row in Texas? They guess about half. That's just not the case. Being on death row and, and being innocent is extremely rare. So. We need to recognize that people who are confident in the capital punishment system, like Justice Antonin Scalia, who I'll talk more about later, people who are confident, like he is, in the system and its near infallibility are rightly confident in the system. The chance that you are on death row and you're innocent is very, very low. But that's not the question. The question is, has Texas ever executed an innocent? And that's only part of the data. But using that data, we can calculate the real empirical probability that Texas has executed an innocent already. Here's the simple formula. It's P equals 1 minus 1 minus P to the N, where the small p is the chance of innocence on death row, and n is the number of executions that have already taken place. We know that 
P, the small p is very low number, 0 0.0093370, and there have been 486 executions. So we simply plug that data into the formula. giving us a probability of 0.98952. There is a 99% probability that Texas has already executed in Minnesota. What makes that number so fascinating is that even though the chance of being on death row and being actually innocent is admittedly very, very low, the chance that the execution of an innocent has already occurred is astoundingly high. What makes this finding so horrific is that it's 99%. It is a certainty. That is far, far beyond any definition or measure of reasonable doubt. The same burden of proof we use to send people to death. We have executed an innocent. Some people say that any chance we have executed an innocent. Any chance that we have executed an innocent is too much of a chance. If we include the, if we counted the exonerated as, as innocent, as most all people do, that number would be 100%. If we looked at national data, where there have been 140 exonerations, it's irrefutable. The debate is over. We have executed an innocent. I now need to address a side issue, one that Justice Scalia has raised. Justice Scalia has his doubts about whether an innocent has been executed. He wants a name. Give me a name, he says, and then I'll believe you. A name is not necessary for us to be confident that an innocent has been executed. I'll explain with an example. There are more than 365 of us in this auditorium. Let's say we have 365. And let's further say that Justice Scalia is up here on stage with me. I would turn to him and say, Justice Scalia, I promise you, wait, I guarantee you that at least two people in this theater share a birthday. And how, how can I be so confident, you might ask, you know, if you've never had a math class. And I'd say, well, there are 365 days a year. We have more than 365 people in the room. So two people must share a birthday. It's guaranteed. No one would dispute the chances. But Justice Scalia would say, give me a name, give me their names. And I might say, please, I might plead with him, Justice Scalia, I promise you, you don't need to know their names to be certain that the event, two people share the same birthday, is a certainty. And knowing their names would add nothing to the chances, which are 100%, that two people share the same birthday. The point is, is that asking for a name is an irrational criteria in determining whether or not an innocent has been executed. We, we can understand wanting to know. That's sensible, right? But it's misguided. Knowing the name would add nothing to the certainty that innocent has been executed. What we've heard here today is definitely an idea worth sharing. Please, please, please share it. And if you're very well connected, please share it with Justice Scalia. <laughs> or the governor of Texas. 
We have executed an innocent. We have executed an innocent. We have executed an innocent. We could bet our lives on it. The problem is, we aren't betting our lives, are we? So we've now come to my question. What will we do now? This is just as important as the first question we answered today, because it will determine it will determine who we are as a society. We can no longer say we didn't know. We know, we know, we know. We have executed an innocent. And it is not just that the government is doing this on your behalf. We have a government of and by the people. That means we are doing this. It is us doing this. We are executing the innocent. And it is not just that the execution of the innocent is an event the Constitution cannot tolerate. The execution of an innocent is beneath even the most meager aspirations we have as a nation. So I'll ask again. Now that we know, what will we do now? What will you do now?